All right, crew, Adam here again. This is the short how to be a better professor in like six different ways, right? Um, so first off, you got to take breaks, right? Whether you're on Zoom or in person, breaks are absolutely necessary. And I think we figured this out over these last two years of COVID, right? Um, not just for like sanity reasons, but then also to like reset the brain and kind of get it back into the thoughtful mode, the amazing mode, like the aha moment mode and not like the busy mode. Like, oh, here's all the things I have to do today. While we're talking about modes, let's continue. Students have modes, right? Um, the busy mode is the most common. In fact, most people spend their day in busy mode. I'm kind of in busy mode right now, I would say. Um, busy making YouTube videos. But the idea within class is that we don't want to be in busy mode because busy mode keeps us tasked with all the things that we have to do to the day and kind of takes our mind, kind of sets aside a certain amount of processing power for those, those to-do things. We want to transition to the thoughtful mode or this aha, amazing mode, right? the aha moments, the light bulb moments when we're in class. And so what that looks like is us separating ourselves from all the busy work that we know that we have to do later. And how is this accomplished? Taking breaks. And then during those breaks, maybe ta maybe taking some time to play a quick game, a game like Agario, some sort of online like cheesy browser game, but it's just fun. Your students can team up against you. You can team up against your students. You know, you get some laughs and people are, are laughing. People are having a good time. Same thing with like meditating, right? You can meditate audio with like audio you can do a breathing meditation um like a wim hof meditation you can do those in like seven minutes and these breaks can be far more productive than just hey let's take a break <laughs> you know and everyone turns off their screen and they just do whatever they want sometimes they don't even do anything sometimes they just sit there like who knows um but we can do better right and that's how we can do better there's a uh, like online jetris um which is like tetris but online like Agario, there's marbles on stream, which I've done before. I'm trying to think of some other ones that I've done. Um, yeah, those are the ones that I've used. <laughs> I've just used them several times. Um, but they're all, all really good feedback from the students. Okay, so the modes, I think we got covered. Um, if, if you can add some some sort of video um, or audio additives to your, your online uh, presence, then I think that's really good. And you can easily do that with OBS. And I have a full video um, showing you how you might be able to do it the OBS in a stream deck, right? You can look at my YouTube channel. I'll post something up. And you can take a look at that um, or something up here, rather. The next one is integrating professional experience wherever you can. If you've if you've done stuff in the past, like mental note those things, make sure you work them in, weave them into your lecture. You know, that, you know the last time I went and helped Disney with their drawings or taught taught at Disney with a um, model-based definition or, you know, wouldn't help so-and-so or help that mom and pop shop make new smokers, right? Barbecue smokers down in Temecula. Um, show them what you're working on. Add some tangency, some tangibility to the stuff that you're teaching with the professional world, right? Another one is learning with a smile. Now, this kind of plays off of the, um, the playing with games uh, on break or meditating or something. Um, separating them from, um, separating students rather, from that busy mode and get them into the like learning mode, the amazing alpha mode, the thoughtful mode, um, the creative mode, if you will. But learning with a smile, right? Um, you know, when and where you can add in those little fun tidbits, you know? Um, one of the ones I use all the time is I'll be, I'll be talking all the time, meaning like one, once a semester and maybe not in every class because you have some same students, but you just, you learn a couple of these things and you, and you just continue to put them in your pocket and reuse them. And one of them is you might be talking about a, a lecture that's really, really dry, or you're just trying to get through this content because you, you have, you have so much little time, but you don't want to lose the class at the same time. And you want to see who's, who's still retaining, um, the information, right? And it could be something like, oh, we're going to make sure that we select, uh, you know, material that has good fatigue, and then, you know, it's uh, modules of elasticity is X, Y, Z, and yada, 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 and you're talking about this stuff, and oh, by the way, you, know, you can save 20 or 5% on your car insurance if you switch to Geico, and you can save it in 15 minutes, right? And then they're like, what? What? What's going on? What are we talking about? Geico? Huh? It's like, haha, I gotcha, right? And it's like, those of you who weren't listening, I know who you are. Right? But you just add like these little tidbits in where you can just to kind of uh, one, reassure retention for yourself. Like, hey, these are the, you know, I'm still tracking with people. And then two, you get a little chuckle and you get a little laugh. And that little laugh is, is just going to help you and your students um, retain the information that, that you're discussing. Right? When was the last time someone made you laugh or you had a really good time? I bet you remember that moment. Right? Now remember every other time that you didn't. You know, it's like that's what memories are made of, right? These fun moments in our life. Or some memories, fun moments in our life. 
So um, learning with a smile, right? When, when and where you can. Um, and then lastly, that not every student thinks alike, right? Not every, not every student's brain works the same way. So, um, and what this means, I think for me is that when, when I get questions, I don't, I don't just immediately pop off the answer. Um, also, you know, when, when you, maybe you have a long winded question by a student, you don't kind of cut them off and answer that you, you reserve a moment, um, digest what they're saying. Maybe think to yourself, like, why are they asking this? Because I thought I just taught this, right? But um, maybe you've taught this class a couple times and you, you know, you just breezed over it too fast this time around. Or it wasn't clicking or something. Um, you could also acknowledge the question, like, oh, that's a good question. And then throw in the answer, right? Or, you know, even if it is, if it is a really good question, don't have the answer, that's okay too. But sometimes we, we are, we're so acclimated to getting asked questions as instructors, as professors, as teachers, that we're so used to just to giving answers, right? Um, but to articulate those answers in a, in a, in a more instructive way would, would, would benefit the, the lecture environment. So this is my two cents on things, right? And then the other thing too is, um, that granted that not everyone thinks the same way, right? Um, or digest the information the same way. It's kind of our job to help those types of students or those students um, navigate the waters and learn the content. Um, that's, sometimes that's done through homework. Sometimes it's done through repetition in class. Sometimes, sometimes that's done with explaining things differently, right? Than we, than, we, than we previously explained them or maybe just explained them, right? So um, keeping all that in mind, right? Um, I've been slowly perfecting that. That's something that does take, um, I think, um, a lot of trial and error and a lot of effort and a lot of time. Um, but but without fail, if you know, if you continue um, to to acknowledge that roadblock and to acknowledge that as a um, as a barrier, that that slowly over time, um, even though that's maybe a really complicated thing and maybe it's constantly fluid and constantly changing, that that barrier is still getting shorter and still getting smaller, right? We're still reducing that. And then by their, therefore becoming a better instructor, a professor and teacher and so on. And so the reality is like, these are all the things that I think I've trickled in this whole last semester. I didn't do them all simultaneously, but I did work on all six of them. And I think that um, I think that we can all work on these sorts of things. And I think that if you pick one of these things um, and run with it, I, I think you'll see you'll see a benefit. And that's actually my challenge to you is to take one of these topics we just talked about today and then integrate that into your class this next semester or maybe this summer, right? Try something different. Try something new. Be a better version of yourself. That's my challenge. All right, crew. Thank you for watching. Totally appreciate your time today. Um, stay curious uh, and keep doing a great job. This is Adam Hughes. Thanks for watching. Fight on.